Hey, Jermaine Griggs here, and I am back. This is my third video in this uh, video series, if you will. And I must say, I am so thankful to you guys out there. You guys have posted some awesome comments. In fact, let me go to some of them now. Uh, if you haven't seen the first two videos, you definitely want to go on YouTube to our YouTube channel. Um, if you're already listening to this video, well, obviously, you just click our hear and play button here and then you'll see our videos click on all videos actually let me show you if you haven't seen the first two videos really quickly you know click on here and play over there and then scroll down till you see all of our videos right here and then you can either click on see all or you can click on this number up here and it'll take you to the other two which you want to watch this one first it was posted three days ago already has 11,000 views and then quite surprisingly this second one really caught up to it it was posted two days ago and it is trailing barely you know it has 11,000 views as well but most importantly is uh, some of the gracious comments that have come in uh, between these two videos so I'm thankful to you guys you guys have kept it at five stars and your comments have been uh, very helpful and so like I said I'm addicted to feedback so when I get feedback it, it makes me want to do even more and more to help. So uh, thanks for that. Really appreciate that. And I thought that I'd keep you going because in the first video, we talked about how to find the key to any song. And from what you guys have said, it's been very helpful. So uh, that's really cool. I didn't know how it was going to be received, but it looks like um, that it was very helpful. And then in the second video, I made a 28 page document that uh, you could print out and start working on the number system. I told you how important the number system was. Uh, in this video, we're going to take it a step further, and I'm going to teach you another skill that I think is very important. And don't mind this theory talk. I use this same chalkboard for my uh, training center, uh, so I'm just using it for, for this free video here. Um, and I'm going to teach you a skill. Uh, once you know how to find a key, which is the first video, and then once you know your number system, in other words, you know how to recite the third of A really quickly, C sharp. Remember, I, I tested you on that. You know how to recite, you know, whatever number tone you are on in the scale or the scale degree, whatever you want to call it, you know the second tone of this or the fifth tone of that or the sixth tone because that's very important in playing chords. Just trust me right now. And uh, and I got one comment. It wasn't bad. Obviously, the person uh, definitely is a student of here and play. They said, well, you could just go buy so-and-so's chord chart. And, and I replied, I said, the problem with a chart is that it's a chart. Uh, when is the last time you've memorized, and I had chemistry class, but when's the last time you've memorized the periodic table chemical chart? You know that periodical table? Uh, I don't even know how to say it right. Wait, periodic table. You've seen it in every chemistry class. It looks like this. Now, I, I might, maybe it's just me. Oh, man, this thing isn't even on. But it, 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 uh, it looks something like this. Let me see if I can pull it up. Has nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but anyway, I mean, could you memorize all these elements and chemicals and stuff by just studying this chart? I can't, so I'm not saying that you know because I can't, you can't, but uh, I'm saying you need something to mentally engage the brain. And I found in all of my study, when I wanted to retain some information, no matter what I was studying, it was always flashcards by. You know, having a question on one side and that immediate answer on the other side, even when you don't get it, something happens in the brain that even after two or three times of not getting it, you know, that third, fourth time, you're going to get it. It's like a game rather than just looking at a, a dull uh, chart. You know, there's no energy there. There's no competitiveness. Uh, competitiveness if you will there's you know so so definitely take the time to print out these flashcards and if that weren't enough I, I've uh, taken the time over this weekend don't worry I had a great Valentine's Day y'all I can bring Saren here to let you know that I didn't do it on Valentine's I did it um the night before that but I, I didn't finish it so I finished it uh, this evening and it's another 14 pages and what it does is it uh it takes it even further so once you've mastered the number system i'm going to teach you how to master four things that will take care of you 
I'd say if you master these four types of things, and some of you guys have already mastered, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Some of you guys have already mastered it. Um, but if you master these things, it leads to the unlocking of many things. There's, there's few things in life and in music. When you get something down, it kind of lasts forever. And I want to show you something like that today. Okay. You know, it's like when you learn how to tie your shoes, like that skill lasts forever. You learn math, you're going to need that for the rest of your life. You learn how to read, you need that from driving to, I want to teach you something like that today. Uh, if you master just these four things, if you're a beginner, this will be very helpful. Even if you're um, experienced, this will unlock something for you, hopefully. Um, you know, but before I do that, I want to tell you a quick story. And in order to tell you this story, I need to take you to a map. This is a Microsoft Live search. And I'm going to type in our office address. Uh, actually, here it is. We're on Rockfield. Oops. Uh, oh, man. Let me just type it. Okay. Irvine, California, 92618. Okay. Uh, and here we are. Let me see if I can click on it. Okay. There's, that is our office. I can even zoom in and uh, we're on top of Wells Fargo. I usually probably park right there. Although that isn't my slot, but I usually try to steal it, you know, take it early in the morning. Bam. I'm right in. Okay. But what I wanted, I wanted to show you this because we're in a prominent, uh, like car, uh, sales area of Irvine, like all the car manufacturers are here. Um, let me zoom out a little bit, you know, and it's even called Auto Center Drive. Like they all, you know, those auto centers, those famous ones. I think you got Toyota, Ford, every, you know, Chrysler. You got them all here. And that's uh, right off the freeway. It's the Auto Center uh, for Irvine. And so, you know, I, uh, we, we definitely get uh, a lot of people coming through this area, a very busy area. But the reason I want to, to share that with you, you, you might say, okay, well, whatever, Jermaine, what does cars have to do with piano playing? And, uh, and in this lesson, it actually has all to do with uh, piano lessons. Uh, because if, uh, let's just say you were born exactly 100 years ago, Okay, um, and I'm talking about at the turn of the 20th century, like 1906, 1908. If you were born 100 years ago, if I were born 100 years ago, or not even probably 120 years ago, because you you'd be, need to be able to drive, uh, you I probably couldn't afford a car. No, I I couldn't afford a car before. 1906 okay that was something for the rich that was something for only folks that could afford it and then you had to afford to pay a chauffeur who knew how to operate it because it was very advanced and technical uh until one fella came along and um this guy in 1906 he wanted to develop a car that wasn't just for the rich but it was for the common folk it was cheap enough uh, he wanted to get the price way down. And when I mean way down, I mean like $800. That was pretty affordable for a car back then. Uh, but it was higher than that before. And uh, and before then, nobody could get the price low, you know. And the reason why is because they were they were, they had a few skilled people, and they were creating these cars one by one. So they'd put a couple of people over here on this car, and they'd create that car one by one. Then they'd go over here, and then they finish this car, and they create that car one by one. It was a one by one kind of technique that they were using, until this guy came along and said, "Hmm," and he did this kind of secretly because he was doing them one by one too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, until he figured out what happened instead of sending the guys to the car, what if we found out some way to send the car to the guys, you know, and, and this was kind of, it wasn't the advent of the assembly line, but he definitely revolutionized what we call the assembly line. And it was where you put the car on the belt and it started off with its foundation, the shaft or something. I'm not a car guy, but you know, and then they started at one end of the warehouse with just all the bare minimals, the foundation and then as this car rolled, you know, through the warehouse, floor by floor, I guess it had those things that those kind of elevator belts that took it up and, and and stuff. And it was really revolutionary for its time. And then it just had people whose job it was to put on the tires at this level. That's all they had to do over and over again. You put on the tires when the car passes through your neck of the woods and then you put on the stern wheel and then you tighten the bolts over there and then you I don't know make sure the axle is right and like i said i'm not a car guy i'm probably giving myself away uh the engine probably is put in in the beginning you polish it up and it was this idea of assembly line where instead of 
doing each car one by one, it was more of a process where uh, this person did the steering wheel, this person did the wheels, this person did the transmission, this person did the carburetor, the radiator. My uncles used to always talk about carburetors. I wonder if my car has a carburetor these days. I, I guess it doesn't because I don't hear that word a lot. But it was basically everybody working together and you could get a lot more cars done a lot cheaper because of this assembly line method where we just kind of did part by part because those people got good at what they were supposed to do because they did it over and over again and um it, i don't know it was just a lot cheaper you didn't have to pay as much for the workers since they didn't have to be skilled in doing all the things they could be an expert in one particular thing and um, you say, why am I telling you this story? First of all, the guy's name was Henry Ford. <laughs> and uh, Ford was my first car. My grandma, bless her heart, bought it for me uh, in high school. I got it when I was 17. And it probably wasn't for that car. I'm sure I still be doing what I'm doing today. But that car got me around copying my books because I first started uh, offering my books online at 17 years old. So that car got me from Kinko's to this coffee shop. So I'm thankful for my, my first Ford. But Ford was the one. And his dealership definitely sits across the street from our office. And what I'm telling you this is because a lot of people do what they used to do. We we overwhelm ourselves by trying to learn song after song. We try to take in too much information at the same time, and then we get discouraged because we're trying to like play this huge song over here, but we haven't put on the foundation of the car yet, and we're not using any kind of process. We're picking at the piano and hoping that we get something. We're just kind of throwing all our chips in the air and seeing where they land, and it's costing us a lot of time. It's more expensive that way because we're not getting where we want to fast enough. Um, you know, it's costing us time, energy, encouragement, that kind of stuff. And so I came up with, I said, how can we apply the assembly line concept? And I know I didn't give the description that much justice. You know, usually when I'm pondering it, it's like, oh, I, I have the perfect way of explaining it. But then when I get on the, the, uh, the video here, it's, it's a little hard for me to explain it. But I said, how can I uh, do this assembly line and, and help people to understand that in their piano playing? And so I said, Hmm. And that's when I started thinking, OK, well, what is the first thing that they could possibly need to learn? And I figured, OK, finding the key is probably one of those bigger things. And then I said, what's the second one? Hmm, I think scales, but not only scales, understanding them as numbers. And that's why I shared that second video with you. And I said, hmm, what is the next thing of this this car, this finished result that we want? It's coming through the assembly line. What is the next thing? And I said, I said, how could I get them to the point where they weren't just playing, but they knew how to play in all 12 keys and they were just this very fluent musician. And I said, hmm, what about, um, and I'm not saying this is a very, very next thing, but in this big idea that I'm trying to convey here, this quick way of playing, you know, it's like an oxymoron because I want you playing quick, you know, but at the same time, I want you to get the foundation. But I think you can mesh the two and uh, and get a very accelerated path of, of learning and i'm i'm all into the shortcuts don't get me wrong i want you to be up and playing tomorrow tonight if you can you know so i said hmm what about teaching them the four foundational chords that i think if they master they can play any other chord they want four foundational chords and here's where the assembly line comes in because we oftentimes you know, want to take in a whole song at once. So if a song goes from C major to F to G to A and then to E, and then we want to learn that all at once. And I said, hmm, what if we just learned our numbers and we learned all 12 of our chords, you know, our major chords, all 12 of our minor chords, all 12 of our, our diminished chords, all 12 of our augmented chords, let the numbers tell us where to put them. That's why knowing your uh, scales as numbers is very important. And then we put it all together at the end rather than trying to go at this car by car. And you'll get what I'm understanding, what I'm trying to convey very soon. So I said, hmm, in this step, what if we just focused on learning those four types of chords? Let me write them out for you right here. Okay, you got major, you got minor, you got, oh, I can't write today. You got diminish. I'm not going to uh, write that one out. <laughs> I probably would spell it wrong anyway. And you got augmented. Okay. These are the four types I believe you need to know. If you understand these, and these are three finger chords. If you understand these, you understand 
everything else. And and if you understand these in conjunction with numbers, okay, because maybe uh, in another video I explained that every major scale on every tone of the scale has certain chords that are most likely to occur, okay? And that's a future lesson, but just to give you a preview, the first tone of the scale is usually major. So if you're doing those other flashcards from the second video and you know that, you know, you know all your first tones of the scale, which is easy, you gotta be real slow. I'm not talking about you, but you gotta be real slow not to know that C is the first tone of C. <laughs> you know, A is the first tone of the alphabet. So A is the first tone, you know, of A, you know, that's how it works. OK, but, you know, that's easy. But if I told you most of the time, the second tone of the scale is minor. OK, and you've gone through your flashcards and you know within two seconds what the second tone of every major scale is, because you've done the work. Like I said, you didn't cop out and go get the chart because you'll never learn from a chart. You did the flashcards and, you know, every second tone of every scale, you know, it because you've done the the flashcards you know second tone of c d second tone of d e second tone of e f sharp you know that right and all i had to tell you was okay well minor chords are most likely to happen on the second tone not all the time sometimes they're major chords but if you had to measure this thing or predict from a uh an hierarchy if you will like if it was a hierarchy of choice first you go with minor if that doesn't work then you try a major chord or, or you know then you'll get into some other variations if I said that, but then you happen to also do this assembly line and at, at one phase of the step, you took the time to put on your steering wheels, just steering wheels. Don't worry about rims. Don't worry about carburetors and radiators and hoods and whatever. At that at that stage in the assembly line, you just focus on all 12 major chords or all 12 minor chords or all 12 diminished chords or all 12 augmented chords. When time came to put the car together at the end because it's gone through this process, it's easy. All the parts are made. All the parts are ready to go. Bam. We just applying it. So if I say, hey, give me um, I need I need a minor chord on the second tone of the scale. I need a major chord on the fifth tone of the scale. And then I need another major chord on the first tone of the scale. Well, the number system comes to play because you've spent the time to learn that. OK. And now that you've taken the time to learn all four of these chords, these are immediate, you know, for you. And so now you're just doing numbers with chords, okay? And and that's how songs work. And also that frees you up from learning in one key. Because now you're thinking of music university. You're playing, you know, second tones as minor. It doesn't matter because you know all 12 minor chords. You've taken the time to put the steering wheels on. And you know where they fall in every key because you've taken the time to learn the number. So that's kind of where I'm going. And this exercise, you can go to, uh, oh, and I... Here's the Model T. This was the first card to come from the assembly line successfully. That was an idea of an assembly line. Uh, here was the late model of the Model T. See how they were rolling back then? Here's an earlier model. And uh, and here's a real earlier model. And these costed uh, $800. He got them down to about $500 when it was all said and done using this efficient process. So, you know, it's not verbatim i'm not trying to take that industry and put it on you but i think if you concentrate on little parts like i'm trying to do over these uh the span of these videos i think it'll be very beneficial to you uh when you put it all together because it'll come together easier than the person who's trying to build the car from scratch all by themselves part by part i mean not even part by part but just trying to put the whole thing together and then move on to the next car it's like you know that can work as well but when you have this broken down system and you're doing you're taking the time to do you know each part and you're only focusing on that part just that part for a while you know you're unlike a normal assembly line of course there's different people putting on the parts at different times well you're the sole person but it's just the idea of focusing on just major chords until you've mastered it focusing on just minor chords until you master it focusing on just the number system until you've mastered it focusing just on diminished chords until you've mastered it focusing just on augmented chords until you master it and then putting it all together so i've created another 14 page document that you can get at here and play dot com slash learn chords okay here and play dot com slash learn chords okay and i'll uh, write it right here so you want to put in here and play you know what that's too slow <laughs> here it is uh, right here uh here and play.com slash learn chords. You see that right there? 
Now, don't I, I figured out some of you guys that be going, uh, you be getting to my whoops page where it says page not found. It's probably because you type in all caps. I tried to fix that. I, I have done a version in all caps. But as a rule of thumb, when somebody gives you a website, caps will mess that website up because caps is different from lowercase. That's just a rule of thumb for all websites. So if you're the one that's always finding yourself at page not found, it could be because you type in all caps. I just figured that out for some of you guys. It's like, okay, it's not hard to type here and play dot com slash numbers. Something must be wrong. And it's usually people typing in all caps or you're just spelling it wrong. Okay, so the first document was here in play slash numbers. If you didn't do that one, you know, go ahead and download that too. But then get yourself over to here and play dot com slash learn chords. This one's only 14 pages. But what I've done for you is I've made you flashcards. If you don't understand these four types of chords, I made you flashcards uh, for major. And then they have happy faces with the answers on the back. Okay, so all you're doing is reciting these chords over and over. I've done it for minor. I've done it for diminished and I've done it for augmented. Okay. And, uh, and like I said, you could do, um, it's two ways to do this. You could, you could look at F diminished and then in your head, you can think about it, you know, uh, and then you could flip the card over and then get the answer and make sure these numbers match. You know, I've also taken the time, like I said, 26 is on this side. When you print it, 26 should be on the opposite side to reveal the answer or you're going to be learning the wrong chord. Okay. Um, or you can start at this and then quickly figure out, I mean, you'll know that it's some kind of F because that's the lowest note. And all of these are in root position, which means the answer is the lowest note. It's not like somewhere in the middle or something, but what you're really trying to do is call out what type of chord it is. See quality is the major minor diminished augmented, you know, those are different chord qualities. So when you're doing it, this way, if you're going to look at this side first, you're trying to get fast at the quality. Diminish, bam, F diminish. And then you flip it over and see if it's right. Okay, so you're going to print this out. You're going to cut it on the lines. This is going to go along with your number. So now you got like two different exercises that you don't even have to be at the piano because a lot of piano is the mind game part, you know. Okay, so you do that. You get fast at that. And uh, and then comes another exercise that maybe I'll reveal sometime in the future. But here's the, the reason why these chord qualities are so important, because I already know what some of you guys are saying. Well, Jermaine, I don't play just major chords. I need to learn all my uh, major sevens and my minor sevens. Here's the thing. If you know these four qualities of chords, there are very few other chords you won't be able to play. I repeat, if you know these four qualities of chords, what are they, Jermaine? Major, minor, diminished, augmented. What are they, Jermaine? Major, minor, diminished, augmented. What are they, Jermaine? Major, minor, augmented, and diminished. Okay, and here's the difference. Major chords, you know, basically, I ain't going to get into how they're built, but basically major chords, I mean, I'm not going to get into the details, but major chords have a major third interval between them, uh, between the one and the third and then it has a minor third interval between the third and the fifth. So basically you're stacking a major third or you're stacking a minor third on top of a major third. Okay. If that, that, that's the intervallic look at it, right? It's a major third on the bottom. So it, that's the foundation and the roof is a minor third. Okay. That's, that's how you get a major chord. Minor chord is the opposite. Okay. It's a minor third on the bottom. Okay, and then it's a major third on the top. So you're stacking a major third. Oops, my thing messed up. So you got minor third here, and then you got major third here. Okay, major thirds have four half steps. Okay, minor thirds have three half steps. Okay, yeah, every time I say I don't want to get far into it, all I want you to do is know the chords at this point. You can go to my home study course or my blog to get the intervals and stuff like that. So that's a minor uh, third. And half steps are key to key. So one two, three. You get that C to C sharp or D flat. That's one half step. D flat to D. That's two half steps, three half steps. Bam. That's it. But notice this one will have four. One, two, three, four. You see how that works? Okay. Now, now if minor chord is a minor third on the bottom, major third on top, major third is the opposite, major third on bottom, minor third on top. What do you think of diminish? Diminish literally means to make smaller to diminish okay you could diminish many things we can diminish each other if we're not careful always be nice to people okay diminish is is the beginning of a minor chord but then instead of playing that g over here 
Now we're going to play a G flat. So you end up with C, E flat, and G flat. So it's the smallest kind of type of these chords. The chords we're studying is the smallest of, of all four of them, okay? Uh, it's basically minor third on top of minor third, symmetric, same interval, whereas the other ones are different. Minor third either is on the bottom or the top. Major third is either on the bottom or top. You don't have to worry about what's on the bottom or top with diminished chords. They're all the same, right? And then augmented, if, if diminished is to make smaller, then augmented is to make larger. We can augment a lot of things, too. <laughs> uh, after my baby was born, I augmented my belly, literally, but I'm working it off right now. If you compare my earlier Gospel Keys videos to now, you notice I picked up something. Okay, so that's C, E. It's the beginning of a major chord, but instead of a G, we're going to do a G sharp. So it's kind of like the opposite of the diminished chord. So that's augmented. Now, you need to know all four of these. Now, why? Because you can play everything else if you understand these types of chords, right? Okay, let's say you wanted to play a C major 7 chord. This is a C major 7. C, E, G, and B. Okay? See, if you're doing the build your car method you know, from scratch, you know, you're taking a harder approach. Now you're figuring, you're, you're acting like, oh man, now I got to learn all my major seven chords. And that's why it seems so overwhelming. That's why it seems like music is so hard because you're taking the, the harder approach instead of the assembly line approach. What do assembly lines do? They build on top of each other, right? So if, if, if the car starts at, at the front of the line, it's going to start very bare, ain't it? And then you're going to add something. And then the next phase is going to add something else that probably was dependent on the previous phase. That's why it's going in the order. Henry Ford found out that he even needed to build a whole new warehouse to accommodate this assembly line because it needed to go in a particular order. And, you know, the, the main body of the car needed to be assembled first. It needs to be at the far end. And by the end of the car, the stuff that comes at the end, like the polish or whatever, all that equipment needs to be on the other end of the warehouse, you know, or on the higher floor or lower floor or whatever. So that's the same thing here. You don't need to learn this major seven chord again because all a major seven chord is is the keynote. OK, so I want a uh, C major seven. The keynote is C. Keynote is the name of the chord. OK, the lowest note, the root, whatever you want to look at it. Right. I'm talking fast, but I'm not talking fast in a way that you don't understand. Please, please make make that distinction. I talk fast, but I make it clear maybe five or ten times the same thing, okay? So don't mistake my talking fast for trying to go and leave you in the dust because I'm not. Hopefully everything you've, un you've understood so far. So the keynote is C, right? A major seven is just the keynote plus a minor triad on the third tone of, this, of, of, of that keynote scale, right? So you see the number system working here? If I know the third of any key within two seconds or even within one second, I know the third of C. I know that that's E without a doubt quickly because I've done those flashcards from my other video. And then I've done the flashcards from this video. Uh, you know, the assembly line at work, I, I've, 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 I've applied my steering wheel. I know it. I can apply steering wheels with my eyes closed because that's what I did and that's what I do. And now in the second phase, I've learned my core qualities and I can do those with my eyes closed. Well, now when it comes time to play a major seven chord in any key I want, that's the power of this. I can do this in any key because I know the third tone of any key. And then I know my I know all 12 minor chords. There are only 12 minor chords ever there are only 12 major chords ever there are only 12 diminished chords ever there are only 12 augmented chords ever now you put them in 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 these little formulas here okay and then you create bigger chords so keynote plus i guess we could say three minor okay because that's the third tone of the scale but we're going to play that as a minor so we can call that the three minor if we were going to play this as a major chord we'd call it the three major Okay, so this C is not really C. Remember I told you, don't think in terms of notes, really. Think in terms of formulas, because formulas and numbers can be applied to any key. So we can either call this K as keynote, or we can call this the 1. Okay, so a major chord is just the 1 plus 3 minor. Okay? So what I've taught you so far, wouldn't that take care of all 12 major chords if you did a major 7 chords if you did exactly what I taught? No doubt. No doubt. Okay, some of you guys are saying, well, what about minor? Okay, this is a, this is a C minor a 7 chord. Okay, it's C, E flat, G, and B flat. Do you see the breakup here? 
The formula for this is the opposite. Minors and majors happen to be like opposites of each other. If one does one thing, the other probably does the opposite. So this one is, I drew this line. I'm not going to raise all this. So it, this one is basically one or the keynote plus the, we can call this the flat three major. Okay. So it's like the opposite. Now, you guys might be saying, oh, Jermaine, I'm stuck. My assembly line has stopped because you said flat three. Look, <clears throat> with the flat three, if you know the third tone of the scale within two seconds, well, can you make it a flat within two seconds? So if I know that the third tone of C is E, can I make E flat? Can I make E E flat in a second or do I need to think about it? So that's easy. So whenever somebody says flat three, just take whatever note it would be if it were a three and flat it. Flat doesn't mean black key. Flat doesn't mean white key. Flat means to lower. Just like diminish means to make smaller. A white note can be made smaller. Uh, a black note can be made smaller. A black interval, you know, if you will. Um, so these, you know, to flat something is not to make it a black key or to make it a white key is to lower it. Okay. And to sharp something is to raise it. So just remember that don't be scared when I say flat three, it's just the third lower. So if you know, the third is E lower that baby and now play a major chord on it. Bam. It's still within the two second rule of you've done exactly what I've explained. Okay, so, so far we've established that to, to learn major seven chords, which are more jazzier, they sound very nice, and to learn minor seven chords, which are more serious, but they also sound very nice, we don't need to go beyond those four chords that I'm, you know, helping you to drill yourself with in this lesson. What about dominant chords, okay? If I'm playing a blues, Aretha Franklin, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, you know, with this uh, seven chord here, C, E, G, B flat, well... This is the keynote, so we could call this the one plus the three diminished, okay? Do you see that diminished chord there? E, G, and B flat. Once you do the chords and you study them religiously, see, I told you I was going to spell it wrong. There we go. It needs an I there. Wait, diminished. This is one of those words that, you know, block your brain, okay? So, look, there you go, right? E to G, that would have been a minor chord if we kept the B, but we lowered the B. Remember, diminished our smaller chords. They only have like two notes in between them. Okay, so once you learned all your diminished chords, the dominant chord is very easy to play now. The 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 C7 chord, we can call this a C7. That's just a smaller abbreviated way to say C dominant 7. Okay, and then if we wanted to play virtually any chord we want to play is within... Um, this formula even if you wanted to play a bigger chord like a c major nine okay now for some of my beginners you you might be getting lost now but just think about this so c major nine is c e g b it's the c major seven assembly line now we're gonna keep going down the assembly line and we're gonna add something okay so you can either think of this several ways you can think of this as as um the you now here's where you start building once you've mastered the formula of the um the major and minor sevens and stuff you can either start doing the same thing we did with the the um the foundational chords you can start doing those same things to establish the next level because what this really is is basically the one plus the um the third minor seven. Because remember when we learned the minor sevens by taking the smaller chords? We learned the minor sevens themselves by combining the keynote with a three finger chord. But now we can learn the ninth chords by combining the keynote with the major seven chords. You can either do it that way, but you don't have to do it that way. Okay. You can look at this as C plus an E minor seven chord. Once you've learned your minor seven chords by taking the basic chord. But even if you don't do that, you can think of this as a C major chord plus a G major chord. And you don't have to think of seven chords. You can keep it with the foundational chords that you're learning today. You guys have to be shouting right now because it's just too easy. We haven't even gotten past three finger chords and now we're playing big chords. Okay, so I've showed you two ways to look at this. You can look at this as, you know, an E minor seventh with the keynote that you're looking for on the third tone, right? This the keynote is one, but then we're going to start whatever action we're doing on the three. Or you can just look at this as 
a C major chord on the bottom, and then on the last note of my chord. So if my chord is C, E, G, starting on that last note, I'm going to play another major chord, okay? So my, my highest note in my first chord is C, is G, I mean. So C, E, G, right? The highest note is G. I'm going to take that G, and I'm going to play another major chord on that chord. So all it, all it requires me to do is know my major chords. You might say, oh, well, Jermaine, that doesn't happen with everything else. It sure does. Okay, C, let's take the C minor 9, which is C, E flat, G, B flat. So it's the C minor 7 that we just learned, which we established was just an E flat major chord over C. But now let's add the 9, which is D. Okay, and if you're wondering where that number comes from, it's the same as knowing your numbers. The nine is the two. Okay. So just think of, cause if you kept counting, if the scale was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, you just keep counting up a second octave. But, but what I do, since you're already a master at knowing your numbers, just think of the nine as the two. It's just a higher two. Okay. Think of the 11. When you start getting into those chords, it's just a higher four. Okay. Cause the, the scale repeats itself. It's just higher. And then the 13 is a higher 6. It's kind of like the opposite. These are odd numbers. They translate into even numbers when you look at the scale. No biggie. It's very easy. Think of music as easy. Music, like I said, is something we love. It's not It's not chemistry. You you go study that if you want to be like a, I don't know, a chemist, a, phys a physician, a, phys a physicist or whatever. This is music. This is fun. This is creative. This stuff is easy. It just seems hard. People make it hard. They try to study this like all the other stuff. You know, music is for healing. It's, it's not to be all stumpy i hate when people try to stump people with the hard stuff it all breaks down to easy stuff okay so let's just say we want to learn this chord c e flat g b flat d now you tell me what's at work just remember remember what i said that major and minor usually flip like if you're doing one rule with one is oftentimes the opposite with the other so what do we do when we play the c major nine we combine two major chords right we combine the c major and then we took you know the highest note of the c major chord which was g because c major c e g and then we play that major chord there well do you see anything at work here i see a c minor chord i see c e flat g and you'll know that by the end of doing my flashcards. minor with a little m and then I see on that note, the highest note, G again, I see a G minor chord. Like I said, you go through my flashcards and you'll know these if you don't know them already. So basically, to play a big old minor chord, we did a one minor plus five minor. So all this breaks down to numbers and qualities. Ah, the assembly line is coming together. Okay, so I can go on and on because this works with 11 chords. It works with... So what you need to be doing now is let's go back to the assembly line. If we haven't studied our numbers, let's study our numbers. If you, um, you know, print out those cards if you want. Don't say, you know, like I heard one comment and, you know, I love the comment. Don't worry. I love constructive feedback because it helps me to think of an answer. Don't say, oh, I could just buy so-and-so's chart or put up a poster because you're going to look at that poster and then you're never going to look at it again. You just can't learn with a poster. You can after seeing it so long, but it's not the preferred way engage yourself get some flashcards it is the way that i found to learn stuff very quickly and you better believe it i was running here and play while i was in college so i was chunking some stuff the night before and i still graduated with a three point like oh five you know i was still 3.0 and i was running uh, you know a, a company with with team members i was the one in college everybody else who was in my office so i had to juggle a lot of stuff you know prior to graduating and um and it was because I took these kind of methods. I, whatever subject I was learning, I tried to narrow it down to stuff like this and, and find a method, you know, kind of like the assembly line. And then once I master something, I, I try to see how does that connect this car together with this next element that I need to learn. And then at the end of the day, it created this, this finished uh, product, this finished car that was cheaper, better more efficient, more available, all those things. It translates into music. So go over to hearandplay.com, like I said, slash learn chords. Download the PDF, print it out, uh, read the instructions, read the cover letter that I've done for you, and uh, you'll be good to go. I hope you guys really enjoyed this. You know, like I said, I put my heart into it. Um, you know, I, like I said, don't devalue this because I'm giving it away for free. This is valuable stuff. I can combine all of this easily and it, it would be a course, but 
I just, like I said, I want to help and I want to be, be able for you to see the value of this instruction. And once you see the value for yourself, you know, um, you'll see how good it is to have an instructor and training like this. So, you know, I don't know, just, just use it. That's my main thing. Post your comment. Let me know if it's helping you, if you've got any epiphanies or anything you want to share with everybody else and just get on with the get on. And remember, if you can hear it, you can play it.